talking to Tony gave my attention uh, um, several years ago when we were doing uh, Italian uh, uh, searching for roots and branches, um, reconstructing the values in Chicago. He had an article about a uh, woman uh, who was described as the theme of Little Italy. Um, uh, uh, Anna Carlo Blas, uh, he might tell us more about it. I mean, this uh, he is the one who's responsible for putting all of our oral histories, we have about 100 of them, online at the UAR, URL number. What is it? What's the address of our tiny, tiny URL? Tiny URL, then what? Yeah. Okay, I didn't hear it from all of you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, you got it. Thank you. Tony, welcome yeah. back to Casa Italia. Thank you, Dominic. Uh, good morning, everyone from sunny Florida. Florida. I'm Tony Morrow. Uh, as Dominic said, uh, I did some work with the oral histories. Um, recently, I put a family tree behind as many of them as I could, and I'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, Dan, as I uh, told you, just about everything you need to know about researching uh, your family history and so forth. So. Today, I'm going to confine my remarks to just giving you some thoughts and some uh, tips on how to go about writing your family story. I, I did one a long time ago in um, maybe 2012, and I did more than one, actually, but this is one of them. Um, so after, after I give you some thoughts and tips, I'm gonna tell you how I went about doing the project. So I'm gonna bring up the slideshow. Okay. So as Dominic probably told you and Dan probably told you, first thing you need to do is gather as much information as possible about your family. Um, that's very important. Um, and uh, stories from your family members. I didn't get started in this until uh, I was probably about 60 years old. Uh, my grandparents were all gone. My father was gone. Uh, but my mother, fortunately, lived a, a nice long life, and um, she was able to tell me quite a bit about both my her family and my father's family. So I got a lot of information from her. But I think the main point is find out as soon as you can, because there's going to come a point when you won't be able to ask those questions anymore. Um, you need to get old photographs if you have them and uh, get them from your parents or um, older sisters or whomever and um, need to identify them. And you need to do some genealogy research if you want to go back beyond your grandparents. Um, and so you can either do that online or you can do it in person. So Dan told you about familysearch.org. Um, I use that a lot. I'm not gonna show you how to do it because Dan did a real good job of it. Um, what I will say about it is, as Dan said, this is a global family tree. It's not a private family tree and anyone can add to it. So this is good, but it's also not so good. 
I mean, I I began with my family tree on family search. And one day I looked at it and one of my uh, uncles, I believe, had seven more children than I had already recorded. <laughs> and, you know, it would have been impossible. So, like I say, family, FamilySearch.org itself will add um, things to the family tree. Other people, probably millions of people, can add things to the family tree. And it's not private. So um, Ancestry, yeah, I my sister uses Ancestry a lot. And it is all nationalities. Um, Mostly, though, Ancestry is indexes to um, documents, but not the documents themselves. So I'm kind of a hard head, and uh, I want to see the document. I don't want to see what somebody else decided that that document said. So you could use it as a starting point, but... Um, as I said, I need to see the documents. Uh, Portali Antonati is exclusively Italian, and that's been a godsend since it came up maybe a couple years ago. Um, they've got great records. They're categorized by year, which Family Search is not. Um, and um, it's, it's really been good for me. Another uh, website that I use quite a bit is something called stevemorse.org. Now, stevemorse.org, one of the things it provides, it provides a search to the Ellis Island and Ca Castle Garden um, websites. And it's a better search, I think, than uh, the one that um, Ellis Island would provide or the one that Castle Garden would provide. And then they also search family, familysearch.org. So I use that a lot. Um, as a matter of fact, one of the, one of the things I do is uh, when I'm looking for immigration records, I'm going to just put um, like a, piece of information in there. Uh, for example, the name of the town that the person that I'm looking for came from. And just have them do a search on that. It takes a little bit, but they'll show you everybody who has ever emigrated from that town. Uh, and then you can look at the original manifest. You used to be able to download the original manifest, but now they charge you $39.95, I believe. So I don't do that, but uh, I did download a lot of them before they started charging. Um, so Steve Morse is really flexible uh, if you're going to search um, immigration. Uh, when I found out that family tree on familysearch.org is not private. I started looking for something that I could use that um, would be just my uh, and my own um, website or computer. So I I chose Legacy 9.0, and I would highly recommend it. It's a free download, and then it's a, it's like $39, I believe, if you want a premium version of it. Uh, the premium version has um, a lot more robust uh, information, but for a basic family tree, if you want to start, you can use Legacy 9.0. Uh, by the way, Legacy 9.0 provides numerous reports and charts, which you can use it as a starting point for your family story. 
I also recommend some Facebook groups. Um, I know that Dan mentioned Facebook groups uh, earlier. Uh, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of things that you may not be interested in. But one of the good things I've seen on Facebook groups, especially the ones I've listed here, is you can upload a document from Antonati or from Family Search if you're having a problem reading it. And um, you can ask for help, and you will get a lot of help in reading it. And some of it will be good, some of it will be bad, but there's a couple of people on these websites that really know their stuff. So um, I would recommend looking at some of these uh, Facebook groups. Um, a word about FamilySearch.org. Uh, FamilySearch.org is nothing more than the old films that we used to view at the Family History Center using a microfilm viewer. And um, we take pictures of them with our cameras. But now they've, um, they've put it online. But if you go to FamilySearch.org, you're going to find that one tape has many years and many types of certificates on it. And you're not, um, it's going to be hard to navigate if you're going to go back to it three, four, five times. Or like in my case, my family, only there's only two places in Italy where my family came from. Alessandria del Corretto in uh, Calabria and Termini Marese in Sicily. So I, I, go, I go to those areas quite a lot. So what I decided to do after going back and searching through the films time and again, I made an Excel spreadsheet and I started what I called mapping the film. And if I found an index, I put the um, image number in the in the spreadsheet under the appropriate year. And um, if I found a relative, I logged that under the appropriate year as well with the image number and the date of birth, death, or marriage, or whatever. And this filled up really rapidly. And I was able to use that uh, to really speed up my uh, subsequent searches because if you if you know what year you're looking for and you know what date you're looking for, you could go to this spreadsheet and just about pinpoint the image number that you need to go to to be able to find um, what you're looking for. So let me see if I can show you that. Maybe not. Okay. At any rate, it's an Excel spreadsheet and it's humongous. Well, let me go back. So I chose to download all of my documents um, rather than um, uh, have a link to the the source of the document. So uh, the reasons for that is number one, as occurred with Antonati recently, the links didn't work for a while. And I don't know, there's no telling that familysearch.org might do that too. I don't think they will because they're pretty stable, but some of these other websites are going to change their links when they upgrade uh, their website or something. So if you're just putting in a link to the document, five years from now, it may not work. If you download the document, you've got it, providing you're backed up. Um, also, if you're going to 
print your document or publish your document, links aren't going to work. You have to have the actual document as uh, Dominic had pictures of actual documents and uh, the story that he wrote. So if you're going to download, so organization is critical. Um, my sister and I started this about 20 years ago. I, as back then, I started taking pictures and loading them on my computer. She started printing them. Um, she has a very difficult time now finding a certain document because she's got a number of them and they weren't very well organized. I keep mine on, on a PC and this is, this is how I organize my, um, my source images. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a, it's a pretty um, detailed hierarchy. I think it says documents, genealogy, source images, source images, Italia. Uh, Alessandria, and then Alessandria del Cadetto birth records. And then it's last name, first name, date of birth. So that's how I do it. Um, okay. I want to say something about this naming convention. I think you all know what it is. Um, um, the first son is named after the paternal grandfather. First daughter is named after the paternal grandmother. Second son, maternal grandfather. Second daughter, maternal grandmother. And then maybe an uncle, a favorite uncle or whatever. Um, you can use this to your advantage uh, if, for example, you've got a family tree and the first son that you've documented is not named after the paternal grandfather, you might go, you might think about going and look to see if there's another child out there that has the, the proper name because they didn't waver from this too much. Uh, and you can also um, use it the other way. If you look at the first son born, you can tell the first name of the first grandfather, of, of the paternal grandfather in most cases. So it doesn't always happen, but it's a hint, and I think it's a good hint uh, to get you started on um, on your research and when you're having trouble finding something. Okay, how to write your family story. Uh, you have to decide on a format. Dominic's format was really nice. I really like it. It looks good. And um, mine is not uh, quite as robust as Dominic's. Um, I'll get to it in a minute. You have to decide on the scope that your story will span. I started, I was going to document my paternal grandparents, my maternal grandparents, and then I was going to go back a level and hit um, all four great grandparents. And then I was going to go back another level. And when I started to look at it, I would have to write 32 stories. So I think you, you need to narrow your scope and don't be too ambitious when you first start. I've been, I'm still working on some of these and it's been about maybe 12 years. Um, so I chose to write my story uh, in a format that is pretty much a uh, souped up family tree. It's mostly narrative, some pictures. It has internal links to supporting documents such as births, marriages, and deaths. 
if you built your tree with the app, you can use your app like Legacy 9.0 and print a report that will give you a, a starting point or a skeletal story that you can import into Microsoft Word and begin um, adding details to it as you like. And that's what I did. Um, after you've um, written your narrative, you can insert the documents that you have uh, behind your narrative. And let's see. Did I skip a slide? Yeah. Okay, so next you can link points in your narrative to the uh, relevant supporting documents and photos that you've inserted. Uh, the way to do this in Word is using bookmarks and hyperlinks. Um, be sure to save your Word document as you may decide to revise it later. Uh, I suggest saving it also as a PDF. A PDF is a much more efficient uh, document than a Word document for printing purposes or even online. And if you if you um, have it, you should upload it to the cloud, uh, such as Google Drive or something like that, and invite your family members or whoever you want to see it, and they can see it uh, up in uh, Google Google Drive or any of the other ones as well. And so now I want to show you that document. Okay. So this is what I would call the hardcover version of what I've done. And I'm going to show you the online version Okay, this is the online version. And it deals with my maternal grandparents, Giuseppe Mantia and Maria Piazza Pelotto, both from Termine Amorazzi. It looks pretty good. This is my grandfather here in 1921 in the picture. And then what I've got is I've got links here. So it says our grandfather and it says our because my sister helped me write it. Giuseppe Mantia was born. And if you click the link, it'll take you to the document that shows where the uh, Atene di Nascita was uh, for my grandfather, Giuseppe Mantia. And then go back here and you can return back to the narrative. And so this is what I was talking about when I said bookmarks and hyperlinks. The way you do that is with bookmarks and hyperlinks. So this is another one here, number two. And that shows my grandmother's birth. Also, Chicago, renumbered their all of their streets in 1909. So this 436, uh, I think it says 24, 24th Street, 436. You can't go there now to 436 West 24th Street and expect to be in the same place because of the renumbering occurred. Um, so you can return to that. And then if I go down a little bit, you know, I want to show you, I did put personal memories that I have of my grandfather and grandmother. Um, and then I have the documents that I'm linking to following that. Now, as I said, I did this in a Word document, Microsoft Word, and then saved it into a uh, PDF file. 
And what we're looking at is the PDF file. And it takes up a lot less room. It's a lot more efficient than Microsoft Word would be. And I would say that concludes my presentation. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Tony, you want to uh, announce your email address? Uh, yeah, I could. See if I can. Um, well, I'll give it to you. You've got it, Dominic. I have it, yeah. I don't remember it. AJ Morrow 42. AJ Morrow 42. Okay, that's it. You can where? you can share it. It's a Gmail, isn't it? Okay. Okay. Well, uh, thank you again, Tony. And uh, You're welcome, Dominic. let's stay in touch. Uh, thank you for continuing to uh, work with us on uh, creating uh, uh, genealogy uh, family trees for the people who did their oral histories. Oh, okay. By the way, Dominic, um, I wanted to mention that the family trees in the oral history were made using that app that I mentioned. Legacy 9.0. Oh, Legacy 9.0? Okay, that's a recommended app. Okay, our right. 